Hello, this is David from DN Cognitive Counseling. I know we're living in a day and age where people could use a good laugh. And tonight, I'm hoping to bring you that good laugh, but also be able to teach something that I think is really, really important. I came across a podcast and I was listening to it and they were making valid points going back and forth and having a really good agree- disagreement. And I do enjoy a good debate. And then both of the parties talked about something and for a moment I thought they both descended into losing their minds and looking into psychosis. Now of course I'm saying that in tongue in cheek but I'll hope you'll understand that in a second Um, because I'm going to play the clip and it's only about three minutes long and then I'd like to discuss it. I agree with that Uh, and I I think we might differ about how we should deal with it and I think maybe I'm just a little bit less completely allergic to saying things that might anger white people than you are. I mean, but that's never the filter for me. Again, that's, it's not about matter of angering white people. One, it's a matter of not being honest about facts. Two, it's a matter of using a test that's going to snare many, many innocent people, white, black, brown, whatever. I mean, the, the people who will get canceled if we have the wrong algorithm for our, you know, our racism detector, we already see this happening. I mean, the thing that I'm really reacting to that I keep encountering on the left is this ends justifies the means kind of principle. It's like, you just got to break a lot of eggs to make this omelet. And I'm not going to worry about the person who I know is not racist, who just had his career destroyed around charges of racism, or the person who got me too who I know was just, you know, making a dad joke. I think that's what's happening on the left, and Trump wins that every time. Well, yeah, look, I mean, I think we, we've both agreed that there are dangers to setting various bars too high or too low, and I, I think where we're disagreeing is on which trade-offs are preferable. I grant you that there are some people who are not conscious of their racism. There are some people, you mentioned people who would think, oh, if you're calling Tucker Carlson racist, I will find that ridiculous because I like Tucker Carlson and I don't think he's racist. I I grant you that that's possible, but I also think some subset of those people are more racist than they realize. And I I don't want to be in the position of grand vizier of deciding who's racist and who's not. I don't think that's productive. and, And I really don't ever in the book talk about people's heart of hearts beliefs that when I don't know what they are. I I actually just don't even think that's all that valuable as a way of thinking about this stuff. I don't actually really believe in free will. So I don't, I don't think it's that important. Obviously, look, I, on some level, I act as though I believe in free will. and, And to return to our earlier topic, I definitely on some level want people to be held accountable for their actions. And so on that level, of course, intentions matter, but I don't think intentions are the only thing or in a lot of cases, even the main thing. I, I think it might actually be clarifying if I, if I read that Tucker Carlson paragraph, because I think that there, that'll clear up some of the confusion. Before you do that, let me just tell you why I think intentions are so important, because in, intentions, and again, and you know, I famously at this point also don't believe in free will, right? But it doesn't make these kinds of conversations any less important. Right, I agree. Okay. Cognitive dissonance is when you have one idea that diametrically opposes another, and then you just pretend like none of those things matter. Uh, I hope that you found that as funny as I did. You had... The first individual, and again, what they were arguing about was totally irrelevant to the humor, stating that they did not believe in free will. But I act like free will, and I want to hold people responsible for their free will that I don't believe they actually have. Because that's exactly the argument you just heard. And what's worse is, the person that's having the argument with him goes, I absolutely agree with you. We are not. But our intentions are important. Our determined intentions then become important? Why? Why? They're determined. You're not choosing them anyway. What, what does it matter? That it's not even your intention. It was the determined intention that you had no agency over. These are two people having a debate over a podcast 
with the intent of changing other people's minds that they don't believe they could change anyway because they believe people are predetermined. I hope that you find that as funny as I do. In therapy, the entire concept is to help people to help themselves to deal with things that they have free will over. Anxiety, depression, not to saying that anxiety and depression are things that people cause, but once you have them, there are things that you can do. Whether or not you have PTSD, whether or not you have um, generalized anxiety, or um, something like a, uh, a social anxiety, or um, any form of dysthymia, or complicated grief, relationship issues, family issues, children's issues, it doesn't even matter. Whatever the fact is of what you're trying to get help for, there is help out there. Which means that things are not determined because you decide whether or not you get help or not. You decide whether or not you think medication is a way to go or not. You decide whether or not you want to hit like on this video or not. You decide whether you dislike this video. You decide whether or not you leave a comment. You decide so many decisions every day, over and over again, without even recognizing how much free will you use. And your free will has consequences. What is absolutely hilarious is that you have two people here arguing over people with these decisions and the changes they want to make. When What changes? You don't have free will to make a change if you don't believe that. It's already determined. It doesn't make a difference what you do. But I like to live my life as there is free will. As I mentioned in the moral video that I did, I had that, that professor that told me, I, I don't believe in God, but I live my life as, I do, as if he exists. Sort of like hedging my bets, just in case. There, there's an intellectual dishonesty and a cognitive dissonance that's being created when you don't live your life based upon the beliefs you expounds. It is very important to become unified in your own belief system and knowing what makes sense to you. Do you believe you have free will or not? Well, I believe at any point in time you can make any choice that you like. If I did not believe in free will, my, my job as a therapist would be absolutely meaningless. Going to a doctor would be absolutely meaningless. Going to school would be absolutely meaningless because it's all predetermined. There's nothing you could do to change it one way or the other. It was going to happen whether you did something or not. That's what determinism means. Free will means that what you do makes a difference. What you do changes things. And the people that try to tell you there is no free will at the same time trying to do things to create other people to change their free will is the biggest aspect of a hypocrisy, but at the same time, funny, and as well as a cognitive dissonance between two ideas that make absolutely no sense. Sam Harris in another one of his podcasts talks about the importance of conversation to change people's minds through conversation. And now I'm totally confused by his own belief system because if he believes that you could change people's minds through conversation, then he believes they have free will to change their minds. Otherwise, what's the point of the conversation? So I do hope that you'll hit like. I do hope you'll hit subscribe. And by the way, to the new members who have subscribed, I am totally blown away because I think we've had a record number in the last week. And I do very much appreciate that. And um, I'm glad. And I hope that this is helpful. And please leave me a comment below and again, hit like. And if you'd like to become a patron to this uh, endeavor, you can always go to the subscribe star link below. And I wish you a good night and good mental health.